it is time to give our little Hot Wheels Corvette a custom paint job. And this paint job is going to be called Murdered Candy. And that's why I picked out these custom wheels and tires for this car that we put on on our last video where I modified this frame and put custom axle tubes to fit these uh, custom wheels and tires. So if you want to see that video first, there will be a link at the end of this video or I'll put one right above around somewhere down here. Click on it and go check out how we customize this frame first then come back and I'll show you how to give this a murder candy paint job. It's time to start painting. But before we can paint, we have to strip. The car, that is. Not me. You definitely don't want to see that. No. Anyways, yeah, we need to strip the paint off this car, of course, before we can put new paint on it. What I use is Citra Strip. This takes a while to strip the paint off. You could just paint it on with a paintbrush, but you're not going to watch it bubble. It, it, it just doesn't work that fast. What I do is I take this and I pour it in an old... Mason jar. This just happens to be a wide mouth mason jar. Makes getting the cars in and out much easier. I will take my super long forceps, attach them to the car, and I will just dip the whole car in this. The nice thing about this citrus strip, if you've never used it, it smells like oranges. It doesn't stink at all. This stuff even says on the bottle, minimum 30 minutes for latex paint to overnight. I have found with most Hot Wheel cars, 45 minutes to an hour, and the paint comes right off. So let's get to stripping. It's been about an hour, and I've got my trusty old remove the goop brush out. So let's see how this stripper did on our little Corvette. Looks like something from a horror movie, like The Blob. Oh, look at that. Right off. Well, I would call that a success. Now that we have all of the paint removed from this casting, our next step is to actually clean up the casting itself. I don't know if you can see certain spots like right in there. We have some casting marks. This side of the fender is not terrible, but if you look at this side of the fender, see that line right there? I'm going to take some simple tools, just some of these needle files, some emery boards, and probably some sandpaper just to get rid of some of this stuff. I have gone through with my little files and sandpapers and emery boards and I've cleaned up a lot of the casting marks on this little 62 Corvette. My next step, because I like to reattach these bodies to the frames using screws, is I'm going to have to file these little posts down flat, then we're going to have to drill them and tap them. Our first special tool that I strongly suggest you buy if you're going to be doing Hot Wheels. This one here, I may not need it because as you can see, there are little indentations in the center of these posts. So that will help me align my bit fine. But I strongly suggest that you get one of these spring loaded center punches. If you, I did not have these holes here, what I would do is I would put this in the center of the post. And do that several times. And what that does is that, well, you even open up that hole a little bit. The next set of very special tools that you will need is a tap and drill set. I actually bought this for my locomotive, my model railroading. This I use to attach couplers to my um, rolling stock. But all we're going to be using today is the tap and the tap drill. The clearance drill we will not need. Oh, and folks, all these tools, I'll have a link in the description to where you can go buy them. So you don't have to go searching them out. Along with the tap and drill set, you will need these little itty bitty screws. These are 256 screws. These happen to be a quarter of an inch long, which seems to be quite long enough for my purpose. The last maybe special tool that you might already have actually is a pin vise. I will definitely be using this with the tap or trusty old 
power drill. And this is my setup for tapping these holes that we drilled out. I use a pin vise, I use my tap, and you wanna make sure you start very slow, nice even pressure, and try to keep it nice and straight. Now comes the test. I'm gonna take my little itty bitty screw and see how well it fits. And that is flush enough. Now folks, if you don't get it deep enough at first, even after you tapped it, it's okay. Get your little tap drill out, drill deeper, and just re-tap. It's not gonna hurt a thing. I actually had to do it on this post. There are only two steps left before we can start actually painting. Next, I'm gonna take just a Brillo pad or a scotch Brite pad, I guess you call it, and we're gonna scuff this thing up real good. Then we're gonna wash it with some, I like to use Dawn to soap, get all of the dirtiness and the grease and everything off of it. Then we will begin to paint finally. First step is a sealer. I'm going to be using a gray sealer. I will be reducing that with some 4012 reducer. These are both Createx products. I will be mixing them in this cup here until I get the right consistency I want for my airbrush. Then I will be using this fine mesh stainless steel filter and filtering the paint into this cup before loading my airbrush just to make sure we do not get any particulates into the airbrush. The airbrush I'm using today is my Iwata HPCS. This is a 0.35 micron tip set. I am using uh, my air compressor set at right around 20 PSI. They say to mix the stuff you roughly 10% per volume, I believe, for the sealer as well. I don't read any of this really. I go with what looks good for my particular airbrush. This is a smaller tip set than is recommended for almost any of the Createx paints other than their general paint. But as far as their flakes, as far as their gloss top coats, as their candies, everything they suggest using a 0.5 or larger. Well, I'm using my 0.35 because, well, that's what I have and that's what I like to use. So we're just going to thin it enough to make it run through this. See how thick this is, how it just gloops off. We want it to run off nice and smoothly, not quite like water, but we want it to be a lot thinner than this. That looks good to me. With all Createx products, you wanna let your paint sit for about 10 to 15 minutes to let everything come together before you start using it. Now that our primer sealer has dried, our next step is to put a coat of gloss black down for our murder candy look. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a gloss black, so what I had to do was I took my regular Wicked Black, this is just your opaque black, and I mixed it 50-50 with some 40-50 gloss clear, and of course I thinned it down with my 4012 reducer. I don't know if you can do this or not. I've never tried it, so we're trying it today. It looks awful shiny, and it actually looked a lot shinier when I started putting the gloss in, so well, let's give it a try. The black gloss actually seemed to work. That is nice and glossy. I made that myself, that's pretty cool. Okay, now that this has dried, our next step is to add a sparkle. And for the sparkle, I will be using these three items here in front of us. First off is the Createx brand Cosmic Sparkle Red. That's gonna give us our red sparkle. And I have to mix that with some 4030 Balancing Clear. And you mix this 10% per volume to your Cosmic Sparkle. And of course, I have my reducer here. This time I'm using 4011 reducer to thin it down enough to run through my 0.35 airbrush tip. Hopefully you can see in there that nice pearlescent shine. That's our Cosmic Sparkle Red. All right, well, there is the Cosmic Sparkle Red over our gloss black. Our next layer of paint 
yeah, lots of layers on this paint job, is this color. I love this color. This is actually Createx Candy 2.0 Blood Red. And like all of their candies, this is like a dye more than a paint. And it has to be mixed with a carrier. And I'm using 4030 Balancing Clear. You could use the 4050, the 4053 clears if you wanted to, but I think this is a good option which allows me to put a final clear coat over top of my cars and it actually makes these paints a little bit more durable so that you can tape over them once they are dry. So anyways, 50-50 with the Candy 2.0 and a 40-30 balancing clear and of course I reduce it with my 411 reducer or 4012, whichever one you have. Let it sit for about 15 minutes, which I have already done. You get this nice pretty red. So what we're going to do is we're going to spray this over that car, over that sparkle. On to our last color. Now, as you can see, we started with a gloss black. We did a red flake and a candy red on top of this. Now, the next step is the most important and the most difficult step of this paint job. Again, I've never done this paint job before, so I'm, just, I'm learning here as we go. And that color is going to be, again, another candy from Cretex. This time it's going to be black. And again, we mix the candy 50-50 with our 40-30 balancing clear and we thin it with our Createx reducer. Now, when I put this paint on, it's going to be maybe one coat, two max, because all I want to do is just make that red disappear when you're looking at it straight on. I don't want you to see red unless the light hits it a certain way that I want that red flake to pop. So again, let's give this a try. we finally made it to the home stretch one more step on this murdered candy paint job and that is the clear coat and for that I am using again Createx colors this time I'm using their UVLS clear 4053 high gloss now Createx says that the shine on this is really close to 2k clear I like the fact that it's just one bottle no extra mixing other than reducing it again with some 4011 or 4012 whatever you have. This you want a 50% overlap when you're painting it. Well, here's our black paint job. Oh, I mean our murdered candy paint job. You know what though? I think it might look a little different if we take it outside in sunlight. Let's go find out. It is subtle, but it is definitely there. Look at that sparkle. Look at that rooftop. And there folks, there's your murdered candy paint job. A little bit of orange peel. I should have seen the between coats, but man, live and learn, right? <laughs> 